along with the clothes and diapers of the child, and then I would see school books with it. And then they are so scared, they're in fear, and they're trying hard to appear as though they're in charge. Now, we're parents already, but they're not. You know what happened? They were so brave, they jumped into the highway of life, and they were run over by a 16-wheeler because they're not supposed to have relationships yet. But the heart. <laughs> I, I think I'm done. Your, your laughter is way too much. You see what the heart, the Bible, it's deceitful. It will fool you. But a mature person will say, wait, wait, wait. She is so hot. I got to go to school. He is so cool. His pants are almost falling. <laughs> Pull it up, boy. <laughs> They're not for the ankles, by the way. They're called, those are for the hips. Give them up to the hip. <laughs> I, can I just tell you something? I just read this yesterday while I was finishing my, my, uh, my preaching. Uh, in the Northwest, somewhere in Colorado, there's a cluster of suicides. And this is true. I'm not making this up. Well, none of my stories are made up anyway, except for, for a few. <laughs> no. uh, this, is, this is in the news. They found out that a lot of teenagers were killing themselves. And so the, the initial reaction of the sociologists and, and some doctors were, probably this is copycat. You know, somebody killed himself, let me kill myself too. It's not like, oh, somebody ate the chili and let me eat it too. And then afterwards, you know, if you kill yourself, you don't come back. All right? So please, no copycats. But then they realized, and this is small town, of 1,500 students, a small town with 1,500, a few high schools in there, schools, but 1,500 students, there were like 29 kids who killed themselves. That's way too much. Did you know that because of this, Columbia University made, did a study, and this is what they found out. This is what they found out. That suicide is contagious. Nakakahawa. Magugas ka ng kamay. It's not contagious in a form like it's a bacteria or virus. It is contagious in a different form. In fact, they, they published this paper and the CDC, you know what CDC is? The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention went over there to prevent it. They studied it. They actually believed that suicide is contagious. And they were saying, how is it that magpakamatay? And there was a sad story. There was this young teenager who has beautiful teeth, and she has all the smile and everything. And the mom talked to her and said, you know, because there were like five suicides before then, you know, you're not going to kill yourself. No, I'm not. You know, that's just for losers, blah, 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 blah. You know, after two years, she killed herself. And she, and she posted in her, what's that, Snapchat, whatever you call that? Instagram. She said, I didn't realize I will end up doing this myself. And then after her, another person killed, 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 killed. Because it's contagious. And this is how they realize how, why it's contagious. It's not being trans transmitted by, by handshake, by somebody coughing at you like a flu, or, or somebody uh, did not wash their hand. It's transmitted by the electronic devices. Because the kids are so into this uh, social thinking of a jigger, and there is no more censure. They just say whatever they feel, and whatever they feel becomes a mirror to the person. Oh, I feel the same. And then they, they said, this guy died, and look how peaceful he looks. And there were like a lot of accolades. And, you know, people praise you when you're dead, just so you know. Even a fa bad father looks good. And they want to hear that because they don't hear it. Oh, I, want to, I want them also to, uh, to, you know, to, to say something nice to me. And all this is because of the social thing, media, coming into their mind. You see that? It entered their mind. It was just a thought until it, became, it came down to their heart. Let me tell you two things. Our mind is capable of filtering junk. But if you filter anything, it goes down to the heart. And when it goes down to the heart, your decisions will be based on your heart. We saw that. It says in there, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Mind... Heart will recruit the mind, and then there will be an action. When the mind, when the heart is set, even if it's a bad thing, he will tell the mind, now I want you to, to find out a way how to do this, and they will do it. 
That's why the Bible says we should watch our mind. We should watch our mind. We should watch our heart. So defilement. Let me go back to, to, uh, to our issue. The problem is you're getting garbage from outside, but you already have garbage inside. Amen? We need to get rid of that garbage because even if you put on the helmet, there's still fear on you, in you. We need to get rid of that. We need to, to remove that. Or, on the other hand, even as we started to remove that, we should also filter what's coming in. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood because actually the battleground is in the mind. The enemy sends thoughts, exposes you to things that will cause you and I to think evil thoughts. There are people, when the imagination, imagination start, they become unwanted passengers. Di na makababa. Nasubukan nyo na ba yun? Nag-boost kayo? Nakatulog? Pag-isin nyo, nasa Canada na ako. You know? Para, alam mo dito, napansin ko yung bus, hindi basta-basta hihinto. Alam mo, may Pilipino, para, para, para! para. Press the button. Ah, anong button? Ting, ting. Uh, uh, nasa Manhattan ako noon eh. You know, gusto kong minto dito. Pinto. Sir, will you sit down? <laughs> Tapos sabi, alam mo, pinipindot yung strip. Asan yung strip? Asan yung strip? Malit na strip. We are, some people thought that whenever a thought comes in, I cannot help it. It will be a runaway and I'm, I'm a passenger. I might as well put my seatbelt on and it will take me everywhere. That is wrong. That is wrong. In uh, Proverbs. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Above all else, guard your heart. Meaning, I can actually watch my heart. If you are thinking of evil, you should say, why am I thinking evil? A pastor said I should guard my heart. Well, stop, stop thinking evil. Meaning, I don't have to be taken for a ride. Amen? I don't want to go to that Uber taxi taking me to Canada. Now, let's look at Let's, let's do some anatomy and physiology for a moment. Can we do that? <laughs> Somebody said, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, please, that's not. Anyway, the brain. The brain is where, it's, it's not in your elbow, it's from over here. The brain is divided into lobes, and we're looking at the frontal lobe. There is the prefrontal area, which is right under your uh, eyebrow. It's a seat of emotion. So, pag nakita mo yung lichon kahapon, like, that was your frontal lobe. Like, excited. And nakita mo yung ube na cake? Like, ube. Meron pa ba nun? Oh, wala. Well, so, yeah. whatever makes you happy, emotion, oh, I'm in love, you know, things like that. Oh, the preaching is so long. That too, prefrontal area. That's the excitement. Now, behind that is called the amygdala. The amygdala is dalawa yun na parang, parang uh, almonds on uh, inside quite in the middle, left and right. This is where anger, fear, uh, rejection, um, loneliness happen. So, sa harapan are emotions, bad feelings are at the back. Some people have this backwards, not, not anatomically, but whatever they feel bad, they follow. Now, there was a study, and I read this, uh, this, is, this study was done by scientists, uh, PhDs, uh, they have doctorates, and this is what they found out. They're trying to say now what some people say, when I think of this, I cannot help it. They found out that people can actually control their mind. Okay? In fact, this uh, one, one, uh, one scientist said, he actually called this, very interestingly, a scientist called it, that evil thoughts, he called them evil words. Or words of the enemy, like, whoa. No, it's, it's from a, a, a peer-reviewed uh, scientific article. He's saying, th this is the study from both, they studied this in England, uh, in Sweden, and in, in Israel. And this is what they came up with. That man can actually choose not to think bad things. You can actually choose, and you know what they found out? that people who actually choose to think good things can rewire their minds and they become more loving and compassionate. I need some rewiring myself. My wife is looking at me. Yeah. What? <laughs> this commercial is brought to you by Oasis of Grace. Come over for honesty or else. <laughs> 
I strike the testimony. Oh, whatever. Can I just drink this? And I lost my thought right there. <laughs> Pastor, come over and say something else. All right, here we go. I found it. It's in my pocket. Uh, another thing they found is that when people choose, because uh, you're not feeling the amygdala, you know, you're, but any negative thoughts comes to the prefrontal area, prefrontal cortex, uh, occipital frontal cortex. When it gets in there, there is a pathway that will send it to the amygdala, and when the amygdala gets excited, you know, things get thrown away. So they said that people who actually choose to not send it to the amygdala will, will prevent negative attitudes, and their life are a lot better, and they notice that these people have bigger brains. So people who are bird-brained, <laughs> that's kidding, have a big amygdala. Anyway, so we can control it. And, 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 and they, 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 uh, the scientist said, you know, this is how, what you're going to do this. How you're going to do this. Whenever negative thoughts come into your mind, I, I felt like he's about to pray, preach. She was about to preach, but it's not. She said, have zero tolerance over negative thoughts. Because whenever you entertain it, then it will drag you away. Your decisions will be based on that. What did the Bible say about that? Second Corinthians 10.5. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive, what? To obey Christ. Before this PhD scientist said that, Jesus had been saying it to the Corinthians. You can actually not think that stupid thought. Because, now, you know what? Can I, now, the question is, Pastor, how do I know that this is thought is not from God? Let me tell you two things. We have thoughts in our hearts and you know that it is not from God, and you know it's evil. Because you, when you're about to share it, you hold back. You know why? Because it sounds silly. <laughs> it does not pass the test of logic. Then not that you know is an evil thought. When you have these suspicions or thoughts in your mind, and then, gusto mo share, pero Because when you, when you think it with yourself, it looks all right. When before you say it, it has to come to your mind because you have to form words. You have to engage your brain to come up with words and syntax and all that thing. As you're forming that, the mind said, that sounds silly. They will probably laugh at you, and then you hold back. That is a sign that what you're thinking is not of God because you cannot articulate it. Unfortunately, can I say the word, say the word ruminate. What is ruminate? If you can say this, you get to eat first. <laughs> can I eat first? Ruminate is when, alam niyo yung baka? Hindi mo ang pinapakay may inunguya. This is when they, they chew the cud. They, they chew some grass, they put it in the compartment in there, somewhere there, and then bring it back and chew it again. Ruminating is thinking over something over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Stop being over and over. Over again, if you think of something over and over and over and over again, that becomes a reality to you. Even if it's a lie, it becomes a truth. Then the test of truth, when you say you want to share it, then you have enough boldness to say, but this is what it is really. But everybody else is seeing blue, you're seeing red. Because of you ruminated too long. That's why the, the, the scientist said, you have to stop the rumination because it sounds silly. Even you think it was silly the first time, but because you've been chewing it too long, it becomes reality to you, and everybody else looks at you and thinks like, she lost a screw. You know, because of rumination. You can ruminate on the Word of God. It's good. Meditate on it over and over again. But whenever it's not right, whenever it's evil, you ruminate on it. You would feel like you were sidelined, marginalized, abused, that you don't have your rights and everything. In reality, look at these people who committed their suicides down sa, sa Colorado. How is it that these people, they're not poor. They, they study, they're not poor. They have, they have cell phones. People crossing from Mexico to the United States are dying to get to the United States. Well, those guys are dying for nothing. You know what? Because they ruminate on the wrong thing. 
I mean, you better die for something really, really important. I suppose it's when you're alive.